What's good, YouTube? Uh, today I'm bringing you a whole new video. It's just gonna be a bunch of clips of me talking about my life, which I told you guys I was gonna bring, so I'm gonna bring it today. Hope you guys enjoy. Please, only good comments in the comment section. If you decide to comment, if you like these kind of videos, just let me know. I just like to talk, so I'm just gonna wing it. And let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am 24 years old. I am currently renting my apartment where I'm living at. I'm currently laid off for the winter. Um, should be going back to work any time now. Um, so this video is mainly going to be just me talking. And I'm going to just do a one take on all this. Let's start from the beginning of who I am. Well, I was born September 1594 um, in Southern Maryland Hospital, which is literally almost Baltimore. I don't know exactly where, but just down there somewhere. My parents, they're great. They're the best parents you could ever have. Uh, I have no complaints on that. Um, we do butt heads, don't worry. It's family. It's what they do. So, let me explain some little details while we're at it. Um, I played a lot of sports. I was a good kid in school, didn't really miss days. Wasn't really considered a jock, nerd, or anything. Um, I wasn't even considered an outcast. I don't even know what you would consider me. I was just, I was just me. That's all I could say is I'm just me. Um, people loved me for who I was. I tell the truth. Uh, some people don't like that, to <laughs> be honest with you. They don't like hearing the truth. Um, but it all started when I was a little kid. I was competitive, very competitive, always competitive, always pushing myself to do better. And I had a, a great dad to thank for that. Some people don't know that some of my you know, friends didn't have fathers or they didn't have mothers. And, you know, I know that. That can be hard. I don't know how it is. I can't tell you how hard it is. And for those who go through that, I'm, I feel for you. You know, I, I don't know how it feels, but I'm here for you. Um, I'm here for anyone. So let's just continue on. One day he came up to me and was like, "Hey, you want to play some football?" And I'm sitting there playing my Game Boy. I, I won't ever forget it. He's like, I asked him, I was like, "What is it?" You know, what is football? I was fucking, I was a little kid. I didn't even know what it was. He says, where you get to hit people and do all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, all right, cool. Sounds like me. So I said, is it going to be, am I going to be sick while I'm playing? Because I was actually sick at the time. He's like, no, it won't start for a while, but I'll sign you up. Uh. My mom hated it. She's like, nah, don't do it. Ah, that's stupid. He gets hurt. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I finally go into the first practice, and I get to see everything that's going on, and I'm learning. And Well, my first year, I succeeded very well. I, um, I was the first kid on what they called the C team to get an interception. Yeah, ooh, big accomplishment, I know, right? Um... I was the first kid ever to actually intercept the ball. If you guys don't understand what that means, just look it up. I don't want to explain it because this video might be long. Um, so it started really getting my, my blood pumping. You know, My mom started, she started to love this stuff. She went to all the scrimmages, all the practices. They spent a lot of money on me doing all this stuff, which I'm very thankful for. It kept me out of trouble. And then... Year after year, you know, I finally, I finally was able to understand what was going on, and I asked the coach, you know, hey, can I, you know, try out for a quarterback? My dad kept telling me, oh, you gotta go for that, you gotta go for that. That's when my life of a quarterback, you know, kind of came into play, my leadership role and everything. That's, I, I want to say that's. I'm telling you this football stories because that's who I became. It's who I excelled at. You know, my leadership came from football. It came from sports. 
everyone looked up to me. They're like, damn, this kid is awesome. He's good. He's, he's respectful. And that's who I became. Um, it's not the only sport I was in either. I was in t-ball, which is baseball. It was these little kids, and it, it just excelled. But my life of a competitor came from a very young age. It didn't matter if I played sports. I was, I was a competitor from day one. It's just in my blood, I guess. Um, I have an older sister, and people always tell me, you know, oh, that's your stepsister, blah, 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 blah. It's not the same dad. Yeah, I get that, but she's my sister, so fuck off. Don't ever fucking sit there and tell me who my family is. Blood doesn't make family to me. Family is who you decide to be family. Um, I say this when I was a little kid. I don't make friends. I make family. I was, like I said, I was a, I was a different kid. I wasn't like the rest. You know, everyone wanted to go party and stuff, and I just wanted to go play video games and be with my family and excel in my life my life I ain't playing the sheep role you know I'm gonna be the shepherd I'm gonna lead you guys into a victory I'm gonna lead you guys into something better not a low life drinking alcoholic smoking addict you know not drugs not anything but we'll get to that at a different time um, that's who I was I didn't want to be a sheep I didn't want to be someone who followed somebody else I wanted to lead and that's who I am I'm a leader I've been a leader for years um, and I'm not afraid to admit that you know people actually ask me questions and I have answers so anytime you guys have, an, have a question just just ask it I'm here very uh, wise at my age um, so let's get started with what happened why I'm here now who I am now so as I was growing up you know I, I played video games I had a PlayStation 1 I had a Nintendo Super Nintendo and I didn't really play much you know I was outside rough housing it with some neighbor kids you know always being respectful and actually one of the neighbor kids in a little small town literally literally it's like 500 people in this town and I'm on the outskirts so there's not that many on the outskirts there was like six people around me and out of everybody that lived there there was a little black boy I ain't racist you might hear some vulgar material for me but I ain't racist alright racist is people who see color I don't see color I see human that's who I see anyway I was raised to respect anyone and everyone that's who I am you disrespect me then I can disrespect you that's how I am and uh, he got all these cool gadgets you know a little scooter and everything which we were real good friends um, he's real successful now which is pretty nice to see you know someone being successful but he'd look up to me I'd give him answers and he thought I was a fucking king shit on turd island but I was just a little turd and <laughs> um, I ended up becoming real good friends with this kid and people would pick on him because he was black now in my school he was literally like the only black kid I'd stuck up for the dude I'm like, yo, shut the fuck up. Okay, well, I was a little kid. I didn't really say that, but I said, that ain't cool. You being mean to this kid for no reason. Like, just back off. He's my friend, and he's going to stay my friend. Well, needless to say, um, he got bullied in school, and his mom decided, you know what, we're just going to move out of this shitty town, which it is a shitty town. So they moved. My mom was very grateful for me being respectful to him because my mom actually talked to his mother before they left and we exchanged numbers and everything so I was like holy crap that's crazy you know I'm actually gonna become friends with this kid and he's not gonna even live around here that was my first 
long distance friend. Um, so we talked, but it didn't last long. Obviously, we're kids, but that's who I was. I was outside riding bikes, doing tricks, <clears throat> playing football, playing baseball, making fucking teepees and climbing trees to the very tippy top to see literally everything on my horizon and ended up getting hurt falling you know shit like that nothing major though. I never broke a bone yet I always gotta say yet after that um, but then I hit high school and everything like just changed you know Everything and everyone that you knew from years before that just expanded. But still, nobody would fuck with me. It was weird because I played sports. That's where most of the kids knew me from, and they, they were excited for me to be in there. You know, you get <clears throat> you hear about these seniors picking on the freshmen. That did happen in our school. However, it didn't happen to the people who played sports. Um... So I flew through high school, you know, became who I was through high school, um, did some achievements, whatever. High school was just in the way for what I really wanted to do. I still didn't go out and party very much. Um, I didn't do a lot of that stuff, honestly. Um, and then, then after high school... After all the bullshit was said and done and you lose almost every single one of your friends. Um, I lost a couple friends to suicide. Um, not cool. Uh, lost a couple kids from drinking and driving. Very not cool. Don't ever do that. That's why I don't party anymore. It's stupid. Why? Why am I going to risk my life to drink and drive. Why am I going to risk my life to drive drunk? You know, your mindset when you're at a party is you want to go home when you're done. That's what it is. Oh, I ain't going to get that drunk. I'm going to go home afterwards. And that's when you you fuck up. Hey, just don't do it. You know, if you're going to party, just stay, stay at that place. Make plans to stay or get someone to drive you that's actually sober. Um, but let's get into that a little bit. So, I was just doing real good with my life. You know, I got a job after high school. Um, I actually had a job during high school. Um, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning just to go to wipe shit off a cow and milk them. And then I go to school and then I go to football practice and I do my homework and had time for a girlfriend so don't ever fucking tell me that you don't got time for something man you can make time just shut the fuck up and make time I'm sorry for anyone who's listening to this shut the fuck up okay shut the fuck up when I was a senior in high school and part of my 11th grade year I'd wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning go make money go to school Go to football practice, go to wrestling practice, go to track practice. Go home, get my shit done that I needed to get done. Either it was homework or shit around the house and still had time to hang out with my girlfriend, which she was an ungrateful little bitch, but whatever. I ain't sweating over that. I'm saying you can make fucking time. Just shut the fuck up. Okay? And the people that complain about money, let me explain something to you. It's not how much you make. It's what you do with your money. So shut the fuck up. If I offended you, then that's probably a good thing. That means you are the one I'm talking to. And I'm not talking to anyone in general. I'm just saying. Just let that be known. I ain't talking to anyone in general. But if that offended you then you're doing something wrong because that's the truth. Anyway. Once out of high school, <clears throat> I did start to party a little bit. You know, you're going to explore. Um, I met this chick. She was a hippie. I won't do any names, obviously. And that's what changed my life. Big time. 
uh, I had a nice job. My dad's like, hey, my place is hiring. Why don't you uh, go in and put in an application? I'm like, all right, cool. So I go in and I put in an application where he works. Now I'm where I'm at now, same job, making pretty decent money. I'm not going to complain. Um, I was able to get a, a cheap little Mustang. You know, not a, not a V8. You can make fun of me for that, but it was my first car. My first vehicle ever was actually a motorcycle. Um, it was a 2001 Honda Shadow VLX 600. That was my first ever vehicle ever owned in my own name. And then I went and got a Mustang. So, here I am. I got this nice little car. Um, thinking I'm king shit now, you know. Got a a rare car. It was actually a rare car, rare color. They only made them in 2007 and 2008. It was a Grabber Orange Mustang. That's why I bought it. It wouldn't be like anyone else, you know, with a regular white V6 Mustang or a black. You know, you see them all the time around here. I wanted to be something different. I wanted a nice orange one. <laughs> That's what I did. I went and got an orange one. And I, you know, thinking I was all that ended up meeting this chick you know I try to talk to her and she's like oh you know we can be friends we'll talk we'll hang out sometime whatever blah 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 and I'm at work one day and she texts me like hey you think you can um, take me to your nearest grocery store because I need groceries I just moved apartments I'm like yeah sure you know whatever you know me helping somebody out and then um I went and picked her up. She's not at all like I thought. She's not wearing makeup or anything. I'm just driving along like there's a fucking stranger in my car right now. We got talking and talking and got her to the grocery store and <laughs> my first thought was she goes up to the grocery store and I had everything in this cart. I'm like all this healthy organic food I'm like what the fuck is this you know what, what are we doing here comes to the total of like 300 some dollars I shit you not 300 some dollars and she's like oh no I forgot my card and then she pulls out another card and it was declined and I'm thinking bitch you ain't making me pay for this I'm leaving well I guess the card machine was wasn't reading right. She swiped it again and it worked. I was like, whew. You know, I thought she was come scam artist. Well, I take her to her apartment. And, you know, she invites me in. I'm like, oh, already? Like, we just met. It's not how I imagined it. Um, so I helped her take her groceries in. She's like, why is the fridge not working? I, I'll never forget that. I was like, um, when it's an apartment, they'll unplug it. You gotta plug it in when you get the key she's like really I'm like yeah they don't like the electric bill going up oh so this whole time the fridge was just warm uh, whatever I thought it was funny and it, it obviously is not going to ruin the food so needless to say she changed my life I started partying with her wow that's all I got to say uh, I ended up wrecking my car over her in a stupid way. Really changed my opinion on her. Um, but she changed it in a good way. Made me open my mind. She was 100% hippie. That's also what kind of fucked me up. Because when she left, she went to Oregon, then back to Arizona. Um, it was just mind blowing. I didn't know how to take it. And I'm sitting there. I, I wrecked my car over this. I, I had my anger issues. And then I started partying even more. I, I met these people close to me. And we just partied and partied. I party in the morning. Or party at night. Wake up in the morning. Go to work. Come home. Go out to party do it all over over and over and over so I don't party anymore 
uh, one day I woke up in my sister's aunt's house not knowing you know where the fuck I was here my sister found me had my car like five foot from a guardrail red line in it passed out in the driver's seat the people I was partying with just ditched me and that's when I realized shit I need to change my life you know I'd never seen my sister so scared she's like dude you fucking call me you know my sister's pregnant at the time you fucking call me I'll fucking drive you don't fucking do that you know so I stopped I let her drive me for now on if something like that was gonna happen and it just got worse um the reason I was partying like that and I'm gonna be honest it was because now I'm sorry for anyone who listens to this um My mom, I'm not blaming her, but she left for Texas without ever saying goodbye. And I, you know, you expect something from someone at one point. You know, you expect certain things. And I just wanted a goodbye. I knew she was leaving. I'm not stupid, you know. My mom and dad got a divorce, and I I knew it was something. You know, I knew she was leaving, but I didn't know she was going to Texas. She quickly came back, though. I still didn't talk to her for a while. That was the only family member I think that never tried to contact her when she left. Everyone else did. I think that got to her a little bit. She realized that I'm not like the rest of the people. I'm not a sheep. And I can prove it all day, every day. I was the only one not texting her, not contacting, not calling. She even said that in the message she sent me. She's like, you're the only one who hasn't reached out to me. Why? I said, why am I going to talk to someone who doesn't say goodbye? Why am I going to follow the rest of the people? I'm not like that. You left. That's showing you, not me. I think I got to her. I was upset and everything. But she came back. Everything's good. I love her to death. I love my dad to death. So no hard feelings, just hard times. That's it. And, uh. That's one reason why, I, I do know that is one reason why I, I drank a lot. But then I started smoking, and then that just got out of hand. And that's when I realized, when I woke up with my sister, that's when I realized I had to change what I was doing. It ain't right. This ain't me. I can do better than that. Like, what the fuck am I doing? I can go be successful if I try to be successful. So, after that 30 year old, she was 30, I was 20. After she left, things calmed down after I hung out with the motherfucking people for about a month or two. It started to calm down after that. And then I met someone else because my my dad, he actually met somebody and started talking to them. And uh, I don't know how it was, but she lived with her, but wasn't family. They were just friends that lived together. Um, so I hung out with that nice lady for a while. Um, some crazy shit happened there. Some crazy party stories safe party stories for once um and all of a sudden I met somebody 
I don't know how. So one day she just, I texted her one day and she was like, oh, hey, I'm not single, blah, 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 whatever. I was like, look, I was just trying to talk. I didn't know, you know, there was no sign that she was actually with somebody. I said, sorry, you don't need to be a bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> needless to say, after that, uh, a few months later, she, I don't know what came over me, but I tried it again. And she talked to me. I'm like, whoa, whoa. I thought you were, are you single now or something? She's like, yeah. Well, I'm with someone, but it's not a big thing. I'm like, oh, well, earlier it was, and now it's not. Like, what are you talking about? What's the, what's the deal here? Let's just hang out. So we started hanging out. Yeah. First night hanging out, I had my sister driving, and I'm a dick. Okay, I'll be honest, I'm a dick. I turned around, I'm in the front seat, we're driving around waiting for my sister's boyfriend to get off work, and I, I turned around, I had a 30 pack of Bud Light back there, and I grabbed one, I was like, you like to drink? She's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, drink some. I turned her back around and looked at her, I was like, you're 18, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, do I need to ask for your driver's license? Because if you're not 18, you're walking home. <laughs> She's like, I'm 18. Actually, I'm I'm almost 19. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, whatever. I didn't care at that point. Let's just say one thing led to another. Um, here comes a funny, funny part of the story. So after the night, that night, like, we're hanging out. I take her home. She drives in my house. Now, mind you, she's with somebody. She's about, we're about to, you know, get shit going. And my dad walks in. What the fuck, you coming in this late? It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm, what a good time that was. That was great. Fucking great. So, the next morning I woke up like, fuck, man, I really fucked that one up. So I texted her, like, yo, can we just hang out? Not actually drink, just actually talk like normal beings. She's like, yeah, I would enjoy that, but let's take a break for a little bit. I'm like, oh, great, we're done. <clears throat> no, it wasn't. We went back to it, and we talked, and we understood some shit. A guy, my friend from work, my sister's boyfriend, I should say, someone rolled up. <clears throat> she was in the car and pointed him out like, oh, that's him, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't know what that was about. So I, I laid down the law like, look, <clears throat> my family, I will fuck you up. Do not fuck with my family. I will fuck you up. It's that simple. In any way, form. I will do it. I am very persistent. I do not give up. Trust me, I'll do it. So we got past that. And, you know, things got a little more serious. I'm like, yo, why are you still with this other guy if we're hanging out? Like, it's time. It's him or me. And I laid it down. I was done. I was like, it's him or it's me. I ain't doing both. This is fucked up. You're fucked up for doing it. Fix it. And don't talk to me until you fix it. The next day, she fixed it. Actually, she fixed it that night and told me the next day. I'm hanging out with my best friend, Adam. You know, he's my bro. I'll always be my brother. No matter what, don't fuck with him either. Anyway, we ended up. Getting engaged within the six weeks of getting to know each other. I'm like, what the fuck is this is crazy. Where's my life going? Well now we're like, say let's just say we're divorced. So it doesn't matter anyway, but it's just so funny how my life was like spiraling out of control and then I met someone who kinda corrected it but fucked it up all in the same time. 
she wouldn't, she couldn't grasp life, you know, I was like, we're just looking at a house, she's looking at a car, I'm like, a house or a car, not both, start a life, well, let's just say, every event that has happened in my life has made me who I am today, and I'm actually grateful for where I'm at right now. Um, I had some pretty fucked up experiences. So let's just continue with the whole marriage. The marriage was almost... Almost perfect. We we're good people, just bad together. Yeah, you can say that's an Eminem song, whatever. You can say that's a bad husband. Um... But I said that a long time ago, before that song even came out. We made it work, but it was never going to work. I knew it from day one. I'm not stupid. I just knew it from day one. And she brought in, like, good intentions, I guess. She brought in good intentions, but... I just knew it wasn't gonna work. She was money hungry and I'm not like that. I mean, I'm money hungry, don't get me wrong, but she wanted things she couldn't afford. Don't be like that. Um, I'm grateful for the dogs that I have, even though they can be annoying at some times, but you try living with four of them. Tell me how that goes. Um, not to mention the greatest dog of all time, Zoe. She's the best, honestly. No no doubt about it, hands down. She's a pit bull. Um, I'm not just being a stereotype either. She is the best. But, as our marriage was falling apart, we moved to an apartment thinking it would fix it and it clearly did not it actually made it worse she left and this is where it's going to get deep if you guys are still with me thank you but this is where it's going to get deep so things were going all right moved into an apartment we enjoyed it and it just didn't fix anything um We ended up having this fight, and I just told her, get the fuck out, and don't ever come back. I don't know exact words at the moment, because it was very, uh, it's very blurry. Life's been kind of blurry after this whole fight, I'm going to be honest with everyone. It's been very, very blurry. How I can't even remember the year sometimes, how I don't even remember my age sometimes. Um... So uh, when she left, you know, I was heartbroken, obviously. And she wasn't coming back. That was it. So, men, if you listen to this, don't be a dick. Just, just don't be a dick. Women are the devil, okay? You know that from day one. Sorry, women who listen to this. <laughs> but they can really fuck with your mind both ends men can fuck with women too so don't don't think I'm being sexist I'm just playing trying to lighten the mood up a little bit I just, it was like a week and she wasn't coming back and I was like fuck you know the bills started piling up I'm like oh my god I can't I can't do all these bills and I just told her I was like look I can't afford all this you're gonna have to do something and I got a, a message from the landlord saying I'm gonna be evicted soon have one too many dogs when we got max on the contract only states there's only supposed to be two dogs she canceled the lease and told the landlord we had an extra dog what the fuck what a low life son of a bitch what a bitch move right that really fucked with me so here I am no bills can be paid because I'm worried about living, like actually living, 
paying rent and paying for my dogs and myself. Uh, we had a lot of stuff from some stupid rental company that we were buying our washing machine through. I told them I can't afford it. Come pick it up. That's what they did. They came, they picked it up. So now I don't have a washing and or a washer and dryer. I had to go up the street. Can't pay for a certain car, can't pay for the other car. You know, shit's just spiraling out of control and I said, you know what, fuck this. I didn't even sleep in the bed. I didn't have a couch or a table anymore. Um, I had a bed. That's the only piece of furniture I had. Obviously my TV, TV stand, you know, stuff that actually came with me from before. But no couch, no love seat, no chair, no coffee table, no nothing. No washer, no dryer, and a puppy that would shit everywhere. I, I slept out in the living room because I couldn't sleep in the bed. I needed a TV. I needed something beside Zoe all night, which is still the best thing to ever have next to you. Um, I remember one night uh, she fell asleep in my arms and I woke up with her in my arms still she never moved an inch because she knew how upset I was but when I found out she lied to me and there was actually another dude involved in all of this it was during you know November Christmas time I think it was a little bit after Christmas I just remember tearing through the house I just ripped the fucking tree down I fucking broke it I bent it fucked the tree up. I don't know why. It was just the closest thing to me. She finally like confessed that there was somebody else but she never cheated. Which, who knows how you can believe that anymore. But that's what broke me. I lay down thinking I could just sleep it off say fuck it, you know. Sleep was like my main thing at the time. I could just sleep it off and forget about it. But I couldn't. I rolled over and I was I was so upset. Uh, my nose started to bleed I just fucking cleaned the carpet Because my dog just shit on the fucking carpet It's a white carpet And now my nose is bleeding on the carpet I said enough was enough And I walked into my room This is gonna get pretty Pretty graphic guys So hold on to your seats If you're still here uh, I walked into my room I had, a, I had a gun. I have a gun. I, uh... I loaded it. Just one bullet. Sat next to the... The door. And I put it to my chin. And all of a sudden, I just... I felt something. My dog... Zoe comes through the door and she's just staring at me. She never looked at me like this before in my life and she's afraid of this gun. She doesn't like it. I knew it instantly what was the problem. So safety never moved. It was never on fire. It was always on safety the whole time. And I realized this is fucked up. I just lost a friend from suicide he hung himself a couple months before this uh, this is fucked up you know I'm thinking of myself thinking of me my sister had her baby she's my niece now I think she was like a year old at the time or something I'm like what if she ever needs me what if my niece needs me when I grow up she grows up, not me, sorry. When she grows up, what if she needs me? That's the first person I thought of, I uh, shit you not. So I, I unloaded it very quickly. Told my mom, come get the fucking thing now. 
she lived right down the road. She's like, what are you talking about? This is like 1 o'clock in the morning at the time. I'm like, come get the fucking gun. She grabbed it and took it away for, I don't even know where she put it. I think she put it at my dad's. And that's when I realized, you know, I just need to show somebody that I'm better than them. The competitive side came out of me, I guess. Again, it sparked. But that, what she did to me was fucked up in so many ways. So I said, enough is enough. I'm going to piss you off. And I'm going to become greater than you. I've already did it. I've been alone. Well, not alone, but I lived on my own now since I was 21. 21 and a half, maybe. Or 22 and a half, I can't remember. Like I said, it's all blur. Shit just got crazy. Once I started to pick my life up, <clears throat> I moved into another apartment that was way fucking small. I had to throw food out because the fucking fridge was literally just a mini fridge. It wasn't even a fridge. It was a mini fridge. I had to like throw half my food out because my parents would help me. And I'm grateful for that. I was drinking, obviously. And this is where I started to believe in God and like pray that something's going to happen. And a few weeks later, my landlord, who I'm running off of now, calls me and said, Hey, you know, I got another place that's open. It's way bigger than what you're at. It has a fenced-in yard for the dogs. Are you interested? I said, I'll take it. I just instantly, not even regretting it. I was like, look, I ain't even going to unpack so, I'm just sleeping in this fucking house. That's all I was doing was sleeping in my, my apartment. I wasn't doing anything. I didn't even have a TV. I didn't have cable. I didn't have anything, bro. Nothing. I just go to my parents. Or my mom's, I should say. She, I, she let me use her internet. I played my video games up there. I'm sure my friends that are with me, that you know play with me, they, they'll tell you the same thing. I just play up there with them. Take my dogs. It's the only thing that mattered. I was mean to my my Max. Because of him being a puppy and uh, it's shitting and pissing everywhere because he's trying to be potty trained. And everything is just colliding. I moved into this place I'm at now. and Things started looking up. and I kept telling my friend I'm going to go to church with her. One day, I told her I was going to go to church the next day. I was like, yeah, I'll be there. You can give me a ride. I'll, I'll meet at your house. I didn't go. I got drunk the night before and just couldn't get up. So, wake up on Sunday. You know, it's fucking like 1 o'clock. Tell him, you know, sorry, I didn't go. She's mad at me, obviously. Well, then, the worst thing in my entire life happened at that moment. Literally, I will say it's the worst event ever in my life. Um, I let the dogs out. I'm like, ah, oh, let's just stay outside for a little bit. I go up to go get a bowl of water and come back, and the gate's open, and they're gone. Zoe, Max, and Lila all gone. I instantly just dropped the bowl, run out, see where they're at. There was nowhere to be found. Max, not even a year old at this time. I'm like, no, this can't. This, this is this. No, I started to like really have a love for Max because of how big of a dick I was. I'm like, this can't be a thing. This, this ain't happening, right? This is, this is not real. This ain't real life. And it, it instantly made me think. 
it was, it was God's doing. It was telling me, like, this is what you get for telling somebody you're going to church. You're not going to church. This is what you get right here. That's all it is. So, that happened. Lila comes back. I don't know how long. It's like four hours after. I just remember it was six o'clock when she showed up. Six or seven. After they're gone for hours, I prayed in the middle of the fucking street, guys. I prayed and I dropped to my knees and I said, "You bring them back." Please, and I'll go to church. I am so sorry, and I didn't know that's not how you're supposed to pray. You're not supposed to bargain, <laughs> but I didn't know that. So finally, dogs come back. My my Lila comes back, and Zoe and Max is left out all night. Uh, me, Taylor, and Adam all go out. One o'clock in the morning. I think it was twelve o'clock. They all go out with me to look. Still, we're in the middle of the woods at two o'clock in the morning, looking for my dogs. My sister was here at the at the house, waiting for them in case they came back. And I'm gonna be honest, guys. I slept I slept in the basement that night with the door open and the gate open just hoping that Zoe and Max would return it was the hardest thing to know that they were out there all night because of my mistake I slept in the basement, freezing cold, 30 fucking blankets on, no heat, Lila was in the cage beside me, locked up, I had it locked so she couldn't get out, and I had a seat next to me so it wasn't, if she was going to move the cage, I was going to wake up, I woke up at like 5 o'clock that morning because I heard a screeching tires, and I was like, no, please, no, so I go out running, looking at 5 o'clock in the morning. My sister was supposed to show up, but she didn't. My mom ended up showing up before I left. And Tom found my dog when they started looking. My mom stayed at the house just in case. Tom and Taylor both went out looking, and literally, we took the wrong path. Me, Tay, and Adam. We could have seen her if we. There was a fork in the, the fuller path. If we would have went left, we might have been able to see them. But who knows when this happened? My dog was pricked by a porcupine. And that's the worst event I've ever had. I had to go to work. Do I need to pay for my bills? I lived alone for almost a year, and by some weird accident. I met somebody, somebody who actually changed a lot in me, a lot more than anyone else has. I'm a weird kid. Anyone that watches my videos, watches my stream, everyone knows I'm a, <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm, I'm loopy. And this is the first person I could actually be myself around and not get judged for. I love all walks of life. Just not fleas and ticks. Fuck those. Those don't need to be here. <laughs> but I love everything about everything. Um, I have a love for animals. Stronger love for animals than anything in the world. And I met... 
Alex, which is Zombie Batman. I met her through Facebook. We were we were in school together, but I met her through Facebook because she liked the car that I liked. Ha. Ah. Fancy, right? Going through a bankruptcy. And I tell her almost everything. Just straightforward. I, every time I go out on a date, everything is straightforward. You know, first time you meet me, if it was a date, <clears throat> I'm straightforward. I tell you, this is who I am. This is what I want in life. If you're with me, you're with me. If not, we'll have a good day and then I will never talk to you again. Pretty much. I'm not even kidding. There was people that wanted to hang out with me and go to the bars and shit. And I told them, no, that's not who I am. I got goals and girls just getting away. I shit you not, I said that a couple times to a couple people. Just because they wasn't, they didn't seem like my standard. I had goals. I still have goals. I'm going to get those goals. I need your guys' help as well. So if you're still here, you got to leave that thumbs up now. You got to hit that subscribe button. But let's go into it. So, I met Alex. Uh, not very where I wanted to meet, you know. Didn't have a lot of money. I was like, yo, I can't, I can't do a lot of things, you know. Um, I explained myself to her and she understood. I was like, okay. So what do you want to do? You know, I can't afford to take you out to the movies at the moment. She's like, that's fine. Just hang out. And that's what we did. We just hung out and, you know, one thing led to another and here we are. I hope she still enjoys my company. I enjoy hers very much. Um, she got me into Marvel. She got me into the weird stuff that I wanted to be into, but I could never get into it because I just... No one else would do it. Uh, she's my motivator. She motivates me in everything I do, and I'm very grateful for that. If it wasn't for her, I would still probably be alone, I would say, most likely. Um, that's not the reason I keep her around, though. Um, I keep her around because I, I do love her. She deserves everything good in life, which I hope that is me. But I not only met her, but I met Ethan as well and her, her family, which her family seems pretty on point with who I am as well. So it's just perfect. She is different than I am, which makes it interesting. Um, she teaches me things and I teach her things. So I'm at the point right now that everything is smooth and easy going and I'm enjoying every second. Um, had a couple rough patches, but we get over those. It's, it's nothing big. Life goes on. It's just your deal. So if you guys stayed for this long, let me explain something to you real quick. You ever hear that song, Life is a Highway? Oh, I'm going to tell you it ain't. It's a good song by Rascal Flatts, sure. But there's a lot of turns. A lot of potholes, a lot of bumps, a lot of mountains. And when you climb to the top of your mountain, when you're finally to the peak of where you think you should go... You look down for a second and you look at your past and you're like, damn, I came a long way. I want you to look right back up because there's still more mountain to climb. Okay. Everything that happens in your life happens for a reason. You look down for a second and you see, holy shit. It's a long way down there. That's my past. 
when you think you're at the top, you're not. There's a lot more. And you gotta keep going. You don't give up. And don't give up on yourself. Because when you do that, you're giving up on everyone else that surrounds you or that believes in you. If you don't have anyone to believe in you, I want to leave you with one thing. If we talk, if you're my friend, if you're my family, I believe in you. I believe in everyone. I don't even have to meet you. I believe in humanity. I believe in right and wrong. I'm not going to stop believing in that. And you shouldn't either. You believe that humanity is good. If somebody needs help, you help them. Whether they fuck you over time and time again, you help them because that's who you are. That's who you should be. Whether they fuck you over, you help them. Because that's who you are. Don't give up. Don't be a nasty human. We're all bone. We're all flesh. That's what we are. I've helped many people many times. And they never gave me shit back. But I've also had people help me. And I give back as much as I can. So remember, help others. Love thy neighbor as you love thyself. It's that simple. Again, I'll stress it. People are cruel, but you don't have to be. You help them because you're a good person. Whether they don't appreciate it or not, eventually they're going to hit rock bottom. I was in the bottom of the barrel. And the story's really long, and I'm sorry. I hope you guys stayed for the whole thing and understood my life, but it's where I came from. I feel like you guys should just, just know that, where I came from, so you understand why I'm humorous why I'm a leader I love all my fans and I love to entertain it's who I am so I hope you guys enjoy all of my content but just remember don't give up don't give up on life other people need you everyone can sit there and say that it, suicide isn't selfish. But looking down the barrel, it was. It is. I've been there. I'm not going to make this public if I don't believe so. I'm sure you guys played dominoes before, right? You line them up. And you knock them over. That one knocks into the other one. And then that one knocks into the other one. And then it just keeps going on. You know, a domino effect. Yeah, that's how it is with suicide sometimes. That's the other thing that went through my head. What if I do this? And somebody else in my family does it. And then that person does it. And then another person does it. I don't know. I can't predict the future. Can you? So when someone tells me that suicide isn't selfish, I don't even respond. Because it's not worth the drama. It irks me that you think that. It hurts. But just remember... Be good to yourself and kind to others. Good things will come. Just got to keep believing. Keep pushing. 
and never give up. You climb your mountain, you go around them potholes, you can even hit the potholes, it doesn't matter. It's gonna make you you, but don't stop. You get a flat tire, you get out, you fix it, you keep going. The best way I can always describe a rough day or life is it's more of a hippie way, but if you're floating down the river and you fuck up, you hit a rock. Let's say you and your friend got in a fight and you're like, oh, I'm never going to talk to you again. That's your, that's your rock. Okay, that's the rock. You hit a rock. You're not going to swim back to help fix it. You're going to keep moving and fix it while you're going. You're going down a river and you fight the rapids, you're just going to drown yourself. Just keep going. Okay, fix it along the way. Everyone says time will heal things. You, you know what? That's almost true. About 95% of that is true. Some things can't be fixed. But it can be healed. And that's all you got to do. Just keep going with the river. Make your own path. Stay focused and don't hit bumps. Taste your words before you say them. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys want more of this, you know, I can do it. Um, if you guys want more podcasts, I can do another podcast or two. But hope you guys do enjoy this. I know it's awfully long, but if you stayed for the whole thing, let me know in the comments, please. This is a very important subject to me, and I understand that it's a long video, but you guys just need to hear it. So hope you guys enjoyed, and peace out, guys. Love all of you. My gaming family, it, uh, it grew a lot over the years. Um, I'm also grateful for all of them. Every single one of them. We have our spats once in a while, but I wouldn't give it up for the world. Not a chance. They're probably one of the greatest friends you could ever ask for. Anyone you meet online that you play with for seven so years, that's that's something, you know. And I'm also need to add that I'm grateful that Lila got pregnant had this ugly ass dog that turned out to be a very beautiful dog he can be an asshole but you know he's an animal it's what it is so I want to thank my gaming community and my family gaming family as well